In today's Unplugged interview, we have Grant Benzinger joining the Be Different podcast. Grant is a Cincinnati native, played at Muller High School under the legendary coach Carl Kramer, went on to play collegiately at the next level at Wright State University, where in his last year led Wright State to the NCAA tournament. During his time at Wright State, he scored over 1,000 points, and he is the all-time leader in three-point field goals made. So Be Different podcast welcomes Grant Benzinger. Be Different Podcast back in the downtown studio. Brad Redford, Nick Given, Greg Wichard is here. And then we obviously have our special guest here as well. To the left of me, we have Grant Benzinger. And I'm going to call you a Cincinnati legend because that, that is what you are. You are a Cincinnati legend. Do you believe that or not? I do not believe that at all. Greg, do you believe He's got to be up there. He's got to be. Top, top 100? Top 5. Oh, 5. All right. I'm saying top 5. All right, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Top 5 is a lot to say. I'm with you. Yeah. Top top ten, top fifteen. Okay, he's up there. It's all we're saying. Oh yeah, okay. Grant. How are you doing today? I'm great. Uh, it's been a great morning so far. So you have the uh, Frisch's, Frisch's cup next to you on the left hand side. Did you enjoy a little Frisch's breakfast? I did. Uh, the service was fantastic. I appreciate you getting up early right now. Like we're starting the interview. It's about seven twenty in the morning. But Grant, you were here. You were in the area around six o'clock this morning. Yeah, I got up at four forty five. Um, quick shower and then I hit the road. Are you an early morning guy? Yeah, me and my buddy Mike Latulip, who I played with two years ago, we work out every morning at 5.15. Every morning? Every morning. I like that. When did you start that up? Uh, oh, man. I did it in high school when I played football. Um, before school, I worked out with my dad every morning at 5. So I started in high school. Oh, so you were slacking off in college going 5.15? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Then yeah. you went to college and gave yourself an extra 15 minutes. It's much needed, yeah. Gosh. Fair. Wow, well, no lot. bedtime, so. I guess so it it, what is it? Do you do it like Monday through Friday? Yeah. So right now, my training program is Monday through Friday. Saturday, I just I try to get away from it, and then Sunday, back to it. Not in the morning, but man, that's a brutal schedule. That's tough. Yeah. Are you lifting weights and playing basketball during that time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday around eleven noon. Okay. And basketball in the morning, and maybe come back and get shots up at night. Do you miss that right life? There. No, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, I get up early to do this, but I don't have to, like, physically, you know, do anything. Did you get up at 5.15 when you were playing? I did not. I did not. I at like, 7. But, yeah, I didn't get up at 5.15 to work out in the morning like Grant over here. 7 still for a college athlete, I'd say, is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I was usually, like, I would eat at 7, and then, like, by 7.45, 8 o'clock, I was doing something. Yeah, that's... I was getting shots up or getting treatment, and I had so many injuries throughout college. Like I constantly had to be in the training room. So a lot of times, probably like three times during the week, I would get in the training room around 8 a.m. and get everything knocked out. At least get it started. When I was in college, I got up at 11. So yeah, on yeah. A, on a good day, <laughs> on a good day. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't have that. I did not have that luxury in college. I had to get up early, like like Grant. Not as early as him, but don't compare yeah. yourself to Grant. Yeah, I, I Grant's won't. on a different level. I won't. So <laughs> Grant, let, let's go. Let's go back to to the start a little bit. And so you've you've always been a Cincinnati guy. You grew up in this area, I mean, and your dad was. I mean, he still is a legend. I mean, he he made the last out in the 1990 uh, World Series for the Reds, right? Right. First baseman, 1990, he made the final catch, Todd Benzinger. So so your dad, obviously, being a good athlete, was that, was that a big part of your development early on? Yeah, my, my dad was a really good athlete. My mom is, too. Both my sisters played softball, basketball, and uh, soccer. So I just grew up around a family that loves sports, and that's all we did. Uh, my dad, so he retired in 97. I was one years old, so he was burnt out of baseball. <laughs> so he decides to be a high school girls basketball coach at Seven Hills, um, private school in Cincy. And so I grew up in a gym, and, you know, we played every sport in that gym. And when did you kind of start realizing that, well, you played basketball and football at Moeller, but when did you realize that basketball was kind of going to be your game that you were going to continue to play, you know, at a high level, obviously in high school and then moving on to college? So freshman year at Moeller, the competition's pretty stiff, and I played football. I was a quarterback. I thought I was the man. 
I go to play at Moeller quarterback. I was fourth string freshman year. <laughs> so I, I realized uh, football wasn't really for me. I moved to defense eventually to safety. And then when I played basketball, I, I kind of stood out a little bit. And that's when I realized my, at the end of my freshman year, I wanted to play basketball in college. And, and so how, how did your dad feel about you obviously not choosing baseball? Was he, was he heavy into basketball at all, or was he trying to get you into being a pitcher, a first baseman, and then you decided to pick something else? No, no. So I was a first baseman, and then all the baseball coaches were like, you're left-handed. If you can just throw it 88, like, you can maybe make a pro team. And they pushed me to be a pitcher, and, you know, it's just – it's boring. It's a, it's a boring game. You make a mistake, you have to wait 30 minutes to make up for it, and I wasn't into that. Yeah, you wanted something more – a little bit more fast-paced. Exactly. So then why did you decide on Moeller? Obviously, Moeller, you know, in this area, very well-respected. You have Coach Carl Kramer, who's known as one of the best coaches in the state. Uh, you know, why did you decide to go to Moeller? So in eighth grade, it was either Loveland or Moeller, and – they ended up playing each other in the state basketball playoffs. It was a uh, second round at UC, and Loveland had a pretty decent team. Uh, so I said, you know, whoever wins this game, I'll go to that school. And this is the Moeller team with Alex Barlow, Griffin McKenzie, so two, two high major players. And at halftime, it was 34-4 to Moeller. <laughs> I, that made my decision pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> And then, do you still keep in touch with Barlow and um, and Griffin or any of the past Muller guys? I, I actually didn't know Griff at all, um, but Barlow, yeah, uh, Chuck Byers, who was on that team, Shaq Jinx, who was on that team. Just it's kind of a family. If you play Muller basketball, you, you know everybody. It's just Griff's the one I don't know. Okay, yeah, it, it, playing at Muller seems like a whole. It almost seems like you have to. Uh, you know, take on a different persona going to Moeller because it's, you know, usually when you play high school basketball, you know, during a regular season, it's a little bit, you know, more of a relaxed atmosphere. You know, at Moeller, it seems like everything is very, you know, strict. Um, you know, they don't allow you to do a ton outside of playing with Moeller, you know, even, you know, outside of the regular season, they're having workout schedules. So was that, you know, challenging for you to get used to? Yeah, it was uh, really challenging. My freshman year, they, they thought I was a punk, and they were right. Uh, at the end of it, I told Coach Kramer I wanted to be a college basketball player, and he was honest and told me, I don't think you will be. You know, that's, that's what you want out of your coach. You want, that's a, a certain kind of love that you would expect from someone that's your coach. And I, I res respected the honesty, and I had a little pity party for about a day, and then I went to work. Um, my dad and my mom helped me with that. They both, they both told me, just keep going at it. Um, but they were honest. They said, yeah, you, you have things to work on. They didn't lie to me and say, oh, you're great, uh, all this. No, they, they told me what I needed to work on, and I, I did it. Nice. Yeah, so after that conversation, did you go on back and have a one-on-one -on -one with Coach Kramer, or did you just kind of talk to your parents and then you know, find it within yourself to kind of move forward? I just found it within myself, yeah. Uh, at the end of my freshman year, they always call up a freshman to play in the varsity practices for the playoffs just to give them the experience and they they picked my man Adam Gigax who was D3 All-American great player and I was I was just really upset about it like this should have been me and then uh, you know you just got to go to work nice so, yeah those little things in high school especially you take personally when someone in the same age group as you gets gets moved up so um, and then so after your time with, at Moeller, you decided to make that decision to go uh, to Wright State. So can, just take me through that process when you were getting closer to the end of your career at Moeller and then decide to go to Wright State. And at that time, the head coach was Billy Donlin. So Wright State was my first offer uh, in the summer of my sophomore year going into junior year. And I wish I would have just committed then if I knew like that's where I was going to end up because the recruiting process is such a – it's a grind, you know, you they changed the rule my sophomore year where they can call you at any time you want, any time they want. So I was getting calls constantly, just small talk, and small talk's the worst. It's just, <laughs> how you doing? Oh, what's going on? And I hated it. So I wish I would have just committed earlier, but I waited. I had great visits at Wofford and Elon. I love both those programs. Coach Young's having a great job at Wofford. Should be at a better school right by now. Um, but... Yeah, uh, Coach D was just, he was just like Coach Kramer where he was honest and intense and he told me what I needed to do to get to where I want to go. And that's, that's all it was for me. It was, it was an easy choice after I heard that. Do you keep in touch with uh, Billy at all? The last time I talked to him was after we won 
the Horizon League Championship. He, okay. He congratulated the uh, seniors on the team because we've been together for four years. We went through a lot, and that, that was the last time. Okay, and then so your freshman year at Wright State, you guys were 12 and 19, right? 11 so, and 20. 11 and 20, so I was off by one. And you averaged close to 10 points per game, though, so you were able to transition – you know, pretty well to the next level. Uh, but that, that first year, that had to have been, like, one of your first times, you know, being on a team, having a losing record. It was my first losing record ever. Uh, it was hard to swallow. But the the lesson from it is you just got to own it. You have to be, take responsibility for it. And you can't blame anybody else but yourself. Um, you know, we, our best player that year got his sixth concussion, was done forever. Um, going to be a lawyer now. Uh, our second best player tore his meniscus halfway through the year. Our third best player broke his foot and had to deal with that all year. It was a stress fracture. And so we were down to, we were playing five freshmen at a time. And I was playing the four as a 6'3". I was 6'3 <laughs> then. I was playing the four in college basketball and I had no idea what I was doing. It was like a chicken with his head cut off. <laughs> you were playing the four at the, at the D1 level? Yeah. How I, was that? Actually, I, I ended up playing the four for four years. Yeah. Uh, we small balled it, and I guarded fours. And I, now I love it. Then I, was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to flop on every opportunity in the post. <laughs> <laughs> who, was the, who was the toughest matchup you had? Alec Peters, my junior year. He's uh, uh, on the I, Phoenix Suns. He, his last game, he put up 36 and 10. Ooh. <laughs> and we went into Valpo my junior year, and they're like, all right, Grant, like, this is your assignment. Yeah, I think he had – 17 at half. I quickly got moved to another guy, but. <laughs> yeah, Valpo had some good squads. Didn't Peter. sound like the guy after you did that much better anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> A little worse, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly worse. What was Peter's best at? Peter's? Yeah, like what was tough about defending him? He, uh, he has the, this isn't like a tough thing, but he has the prettiest jump shot I've ever seen in person. It is so pure. And then he's 6'8", he's 6'9", six, six, and can just do it all. He's just a great college player. Where is he from? He's not an Illinois. overseas guy, He's an is Illinois he? guy. Yeah, because uh, Valpo seems to get a lot of overseas guys. I had a buddy of mine uh, play basketball there as well a couple years ago. So freshman, sophomore year under Billy Donlin, and then uh, Billy ends up getting – how did that situation work out? Because Billy obviously is no longer at Wright State, but he was removed from the head coaching position. So were you aware as a player that your head coach – you know, wasn't going to be around for your, the following year? We had no idea. We just got to the conference championship uh, last game, and we just fell short by nine points. And I, I think it was five days later, we were hanging out in my apartment, and my buddy Parker just scrolls through Twitter, and it says, uh, I think it was Rostein, and said, Billy Donlin out as Wright State head coach. And we're like, what's going on? Like, the AD, uh, people can't tell us first. Like, we have to find out through Twitter. So that was pretty hard. And, you know, we had a team meeting later that night in our apartment with Coach D, all the other coaches, and it was just a little powwow, you know, a heart-to-heart. -heart. And that was, that was special that we were all there for that. And it was about three weeks go by. We, we have no coach, no, nothing to do, nothing on our plate, just classes. And it, it was weird. It was like being a regular student. We all hated it. Yeah. And then you actually asked for your release at some point, right? Was that, was that before or after uh, Scott Nagy got the head job? So I tried to get my release right after it happened, and I was told I had to wait until we got a new head coach. I thought that was BS. You know, like, this is, my, this is yeah. my college career. I should be able to do this. And they wouldn't let me. But the AD just said, look, we know who we're hiring. Just wait till you meet them and then decide and – Look, looking back, I was upset about it, but now I'm, right. I'm glad he did that because Coach Nagy is amazing. He's, uh, I look up to him, and I'm, I'm glad I stayed. And, and so who, the AD would not grant you a release immediately? Yeah, he said it was policy. Okay. And I'm on, real, I'm real, I'm on really good terms with our AD, so I'm yeah. not trying to knock him or anything. Yeah. But that's what he said, and that's what he, it was a policy for all sports. Gotcha. And then so obviously you guys had a successful run. Uh, your last two years uh, with Scott Nagy, and, and taking a look closer at to your last year, your senior year, you know your your group wasn't really like highly touted uh, to play at a high level in the Horizon League, and, and you guys 
you know, come out, you play really well, uh, you get through the regular season, didn't win the regular season title, Northern Kentucky did, but you beat Northern Kentucky twice in the regular season, once at BB&T where you had 31 points, and then you won again at Wright State, which that game essentially, that home game for you was the Horizon League title. It, it looked like that at that point. And then you moved on, won the Horizon League tournament, and took Wright State to the, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament. Yeah, so preseason rankings came out, and we were picked fifth. Uh, there was no respect for us. They didn't, they didn't know, though. They didn't know who we had as freshmen coming in. They, just, they had no idea how we would be. And, yeah, we beat Northern Kentucky at home, so we had first place locked up, and then we just we choked it away. That's, that's what it was. We, we choked at IUPUI, and, you know, as a senior, you take responsibility for that because I wasn't ready to play. But then looking back on it, it's like no first place team that won the regular season ever won the conference tournament like in the format it is now. So it helped. It, yeah. In the end, it helped. How was playing in uh, Detroit? Because that's where they uh, they do the Horizon League tournament over at Little Caesars Arena. So in Detroit, I'm convinced that we play. There's one hoop that is hard rim, and the other hoop's soft. And I, <laughs> and we figured it out that the soft rim is the Detroit Pistons' second half hoop. So I think the Detroit Pistons have a little uh, conspiracy mm, going on. Yeah. But it was crazy because the first game, it was Detroit versus um, – oh, it was Detroit versus – I don't know who, but first half, Detroit couldn't hit a shot, and the other team was hitting all these shots. Second half, it was the exact opposite. And it ended up being a game. And then it was like that for the whole tournament. It was pretty huh. crazy. And how was that NCAA experience too? I know you, got, you guys got bounced in the first round by Tennessee, but at least, you know, that week leading up to seeing your name on the uh, selection show on that Sunday, even though it was a little bit of an awkward format not being on CBS. But, you know, that week leading up to it, I mean, how special was that for you? It was great. Uh, we, we definitely just embraced it. Uh, I think we might have embraced it a little too much and got too content about just being uh, conference champions. We We didn't do the things necessary, I think, to be competitive in that Tennessee game. And everything leading up to it was great. Everything was awesome about it. The warm-up, the practice, being able to have Ryan Custer with us was great. And then the game happens, and you're like, oh, my gosh. And at the end, you just feel so sorry about it. And you feel sick because all these fans and all your family came out to support you, and you just laid a big, fat egg. And Tennessee's a tough team, though. Oh, they were great. Okay. Uh, Coach Scott, Barnes, yeah. he was – he had them ready to play. We thought, you know, they wouldn't be ready. Like well, they – I think they had a huge chip on their shoulder losing in the SEC championship game. Yeah. So, I mean, I think they were saying, like, no, we're going to go to Elite Eight and tell them to shut up. Yeah, and then they lost to uh, – Well, they lost, but – Yeah. But you guys had some really good wins this, like, this year. You guys beat Georgia Tech. I mean, that's, that's – and then I, I, that was interesting seeing the first game you guys played this year is Loyola Chicago. Oh, my Lost gosh. by four. That's a, That's – I couldn't watch the tournament because of that game. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Brad ran through our house when they won their, oh, they had their so first happy. buzzer beater. He was so happy. Yeah, because I picked them in the Sweet 16. Yeah. And I had no idea that they were going to go to the <laughs> Final Four, though. I you, how did they get to the Final Four? You played against them. I mean, did you have any <laughs> yeah, idea? What's the inside I mean, scooper? what the heck? How did they do it? So I, I thought they were going to win their first game. I, I knew they could beat Miami. And the way they play, it's you, at, that's, at one point um, – Ingram was their five in the game. And he's 6'5", maybe, 6'6". Six, six. And so they're playing small ball, and it's just drive and kick. And they have five guys that can shoot it. And then if Crutwig's in, he's unbelievable as a yeah, freshman. Yeah, Crutwig's a stud. Yeah, and great feet. Also, fun, great thing about Crutwig, he has a Christmas album. What do you mean he's got what? a Christmas album? Him and his high school buddies, they would call themselves <laughs> the Six Cheersmen and made a Christmas album on Spotify. No and like, is way. it like gospel is it R&B? Now? I think it, there's an ESPN article about it. You should look it up. That's, what kind of music is it? It's just Christmas covers. Can we look this up? Yeah. Is it, do they have it on? Uh, it's on, uh, what's your Mike Vick song on? Um, SoundCloud? SoundCloud? It's on SoundCloud. Six Cheersmen. Uh, but there's only five. Brad loved that you just shout out his Mike Vick song, by the way. Love that. Big fan. SoundCloud B. Scott. <laughs> the, like... I bet like ninety dollars. Yeah. that this is gonna be clipped up for Instagram now, <laughs> with a li- with a with a link in description. It absolutely will be. <laughs> Greg, are you are you? Can you find it? Uh, I yeah, I have found it. Can you play it? Yeah. It, it's so bad. 
Oh, it's not good. No, it's not good. Is it like funny bad or is it just bad because it sucks? It's it's funny bad. Okay. Wonderful. Funny bad is okay, Wonderful. I guess. Let's see. Which one has the most plays? A wonderful At least your Christmas rap's not bad. funny bad. Yeah, no. like I, I'm It gonna, just sucks. I'm going to turn my mic uh, <laughs> towards the computer. Oh. Well, I guess uh, people can agree to disagree. No I'm kidding. You know? I, think, I think you have true raw talent. Yeah, absolutely. I think you were... Never mind, I'll stop. Wait, this is it? This is it. <laughs> See people like listening to their car right now, like, can we not do this? Oh, wow, it's not good at all, is it? Wow. <laughs> Greg, how many uh, how many tracks do they have on here? Um, God, it, it looks bad. like it looks like they've got nine hot tracks. Let's do let's do one more. You want nine, yeah, what, nine what was hot hey, what was the what was the name? Do they have different names for these songs? Oh yeah, we're gonna play the one that has the least plays, and it's gonna be uh, Christmas <laughs> dinner country style. Christmas dinner country style. They didn't say Jeremiah going up your mother. Yeah, I think that's what he said. So that's Crudwick. That's Crudwick, yeah. They need to be Man, signed. Dude. Can we sign Crudwick? <laughs> Are we going to start like a label portion? <laughs> yeah, can oh we sign Crudwick to a deal? He can, he can sing your hooks for your next <laughs> Yeah, he'd be great. That's a great, I mean, that's great information. Thanks for telling us that. Yeah, thank you for that. How did you, did, did they really have an article about this? Yeah, it was a, if I'm not mistaken, it was an ESPN article. And, you know, they, they made, they just said, how, how hard is it to make an album? And, you know, they got GarageBand and they did it on an iPhone, basically. Sound like it. Well, it didn't sound like yeah, they put like a lot it. of effort, like, money Was he, like, it. trying, was he, like, telling you about, like, hey, yo, check out my Spotify link, like, <laughs> yeah. during the game and, and stuff? Line, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a, the article is, uh, this is the true story of the Final Four's best Christmas cover band. <laughs> They're just fishing for stories when you get to the Final Four. Oh, yeah. They, they struck gold with that one, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree. Are you ever going to make a Christmas album? You know, after that, it kind of inspired me. Like, how, how yeah. hard is it to, to do that? I, mean, I don't think it's hard to do that. No. That what we just heard, I don't think that's, I don't think that that's challenging. The Be Different <laughs> Christmas album, that could be pretty fun, though. Yeah, but then he'd have to start waking up at, like, 4 in the morning yeah. to record. You'd really have to work out your schedule. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be able to work out at 5. You'd have to, you'd have to come even an hour earlier. I think a Christmas album, the Be Different Christmas album, could really do some special things. If we just all commit to it, you know, maybe we get a feature from LeVar Ball. We add Crudwig, bring Benzinger in on this. A feature. A every guest <laughs> you have, just have them sing a line. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, actually, that's, oh, that's a, a great good, idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. See, this good is idea. how we need it's, an idea. It's a good idea. I don't want to sing, though. <laughs> I'll record. You, I think you have a good voice, though. You have a nice, like, low. I'll hum. Yeah, you have a, in the background. You think, you think uh, Given's the baritone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm more treble, you know? <laughs> I'm more of, like, treble tone. Um, like Greg, I'll produce the mixes. Produce and drum, uh, percussion. You look like a percussion like, guy. Ch -ch -ch -ch. A guy I in the back beat, yeah. that just you know, I'm not very good at keeping beats. Takes a couple <laughs> puffs in between verses and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we get creatively lifted, we can speak about this. Yeah, then we can maybe really start doing a great job. Yeah. Well, moving on. Moving on. So, what, what, moving on. What are you doing now? What's going on with you? You're no longer in college. You're done. You don't... Well, are you taking classes still? I'm in two classes right now. What are you taking? Fixed income security analysis and strategic management. Fixed Love income it. security analysis? Love it. I what is that? Stuff like that. We're, we're what, even, what is that? Bond market and understanding duration and how it all works. How is that? It was, it's pretty good. Uh, we, right. we had a That's presentation good. yesterday, and I think we crushed it. Uh, we, we did well. Nice. That's good. I like that. I was always big into uh, academics, so I mean it's just very—it's always been very important to me to do really well in school. So I'm glad that I'm glad you're enjoying it. I had the highest GPA here. I don't think there's any—I don't think there's any debating that. Uh, yeah. I yeah. I'm not gonna fight you. Yeah. There. No. Yeah. What was your GPA? What's that? What was your GPA? I don't remember, but it was good. It oh. might have been better served for you to go to a technical college, though. 
so you could figure out light bulbs and things like that. Uh, I'm not Did you know Brad didn't know how to screw on a light bulb till like a few years ago? Literally. Actually, like not know how to screw on a light bulb. I would Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I mean, the whole concept to me is, is was a little bit uh, foreign, a little out out of date. It's different. It's not something I would do every day. Well, you'd have really bad light bulbs. What's that? If you did it every day, you'd need to get different light bulbs. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, or you could just do it for practice. <laughs> yeah, or for practice. So, if I mean, you I get, to. <laughs> I'm just saying you could. So I saw that you just signed with uh, KMG Sports, Brandon Hunter in Cincinnati. Uh, so how did that relationship develop and, um, you know, I guess thoughts playing at the next level, excited, nervous, anxious, you know, wh- what are your feelings? So after the Northern Kentucky game at BBT. When you uh, kind of dominated that game, I actually, I did that game. I have some clips of me calling uh, all of Grant's points in that game. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so after that one, my, the guy that ran my AU program, Alex Meacham, yeah, he said, "Look, I have some agents you should definitely look into." And he got me in contact with Brandon Hunter, and you know, after that, we just built a relationship. He came to my senior night. He came to a couple games, and uh, he watched a lot of the the games in Detroit. And so I, it was kind of a, it was almost a no brainer for me, just because the other agents that I was talking to, they just uh, I couldn't meet with them face to face, and I thought that was pretty important to be able to meet face to face, actually shake his hand, and you know really believe in him. That that was the difference. And then to the pro basketball thing, uh, I'm at this stage where you know nothing's guaranteed. Um, I could blow my knee out tonight and be done. So it's kind of like I'm in the tunnel and I don't really see the light, and I I just don't know right now. And I'm just you, you don't get an offer until June, July, and then NBA workouts, you don't even know about those. You don't know if you'll ever get one. And so it's, it's a weird time right now. I'm just trying to stay, stay ready. Yeah, so uh, workout-wise, so you said you'd go on five days a week. Are you doing anything, like, training-wise? Are you working with anyone specifically right now to, to make sure that you know, you're where you want to be physically? So I, my, the guy that does my strength program, he's at Charleston Southern right now. Okay. He was at Wright State. He's a good friend of mine, Stephen Gassard. Um, Gossard, sorry. But um, we call him Goose, so that's why I said it like that. Um, goose. goose sounds better. I like Goose. Yeah, so he, he, he did my uh, – another friend of mine, Matt Vest, who's playing in Germany right now in the second league there. Um, he did his, tra- his strength thing, and, you know, he – I just looked at him last summer. I was like, yeah, I want to be that. I want to do what he did, and that's what I'm doing. And then basketball-wise, I think – you know, you see on Instagram, everyone has a trainer. Everyone has someone helping them with all that, like making their workouts. And, you know, it helps to be in the gym with someone else, but I also don't think you need someone making your schedule up every day. Right. Like, it, there's enough information out there that you can get on your own that you don't need someone else. Yeah, absolutely. So if you had your choice of where you would play, you know, where where do you want to be? Are you completely fine with – you know, whatever happens, you're just going to ride it out in best opportunity. And whether that's July or mid-August or end of August or September, I mean, because there's some guys, too, that will play in the G League um, for a period of time at the beginning, and then they'll move on, they'll go overseas. Or, so are you open to kind of a, a number of different um, possibilities? Yeah, I'm just trying to stay open-minded as possible. Yeah. Because um, you, you just you really don't know. And – whatever the best opportunity arises and whatever my agent thinks is best for me because it's all about opportunity too. You know, you can't just go to a team and then ride the bench. You want a coach that believes in you and wants you to kind of be the man, the glue guy, whatever, have an important role. And so I'm just waiting for that. Would you go to China and play? I would, yeah, that would be awesome. The CBA would be a great league. China, what, where else? I, I've actually heard that, um, well, anywhere in Europe would be good. Australia. Australia what about would Lithuania? Be good. Would you ever go play in Lithuania? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah. Uh, Nick Zyslov, he plays there now. Lithuania. He, he plays right. there now, and he has. You a just, great you time. like that league? It's your favorite league. It's my. It's the top league. I mean, competition wise yeah, in the world right the now. Top league in Lithuania. Yeah, it's the top, <laughs> it's the top league in the world, um, as far as I'm concerned. He like loves the balls more than his own family. So. Oh, I just. I mean, I think they're great people. <laughs> Brad thinks all the way Brad, Brad said the uh, the other day that uh, the Bulls need need a, need a white guy around. They needed a, yeah, a stronger presence for a white guy. So uh, and he wants the to big be that guy. Brand, so I've I've really wanted to. He's put uh, in an application. Yeah, 
He hasn't heard back. I don't think they've read it yet. Oh, hasn't gotten there in Lithuania. Yeah. It's a long way away. Well, the problem <laughs> is if uh, if Lamelo got a hold of it, I don't know if they he could read it. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just not 100% certain. Grant, don't he laugh. Would be that might be your teammate. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. Yeah, don't laugh. Don't laugh. It might be your teammate. Lamello. I mean, Lamelo is my guy. I just don't. I just don't know how well he, he reads. Read. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it doesn't mean he's a bad guy. So Floyd you, Mayweather can't read. Do you want to go overseas though? Yeah, I want de- to. So I went to China this past summer. Um, I had a great time. You know, we just we helped uh, in the community, and we also played pro teams, and I loved it. I'm not, and so I, I would think Europe is maybe, I don't know if it's better. It's can't really compare. It's just two different continents, but yeah. it would be awesome. Uh, see the world, play basketball, get paid, and just, check, check, check. Yeah, have, yeah, have a great time. And you're else? single too, right? So Yeah, and I'm single. And so, I don't know. I don't know if, I, if I'd have as much fun being single in China or in Europe, though. I'd probably rather go to Europe and play. Because you're only playing like one game a week, which means you should have a lot of time on your hands to network. You're only playing one game <laughs> network. <laughs> you're only playing one game a week. Yeah, unless you're in. So you play in your league that you're in, and then if you're tournaments like, or something. If you're like in the Euro Cup League or the Euro League, then you'll play multiple. But so you get to yeah. practice Man, a one lot. game a week. Yeah, God, you gotta love that that lifestyle. I don't know. It seems like uh, the guys that I know that play over there, they. They love it and they hate it. They love it because you have so much time, but then they hate it because if you have a bad game, you have a week to just uh, fall just, over. Yeah, it, that makes know? sense. Mm-hmm. Do you get to a point where you just like stop caring though, and you just play? I think of it, I don't. I think you're too young to stop caring, but, but I think so at, at some so point at you some get point there. you're just like, all right, like I'm. I've been doing this for so long. Well, it's you, like I just that play. interview we did with Jordan Crawford when he was literally like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just like to see how many points I can score. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I don't think he cares at that point. Yeah, we called, uh, well, Jordan called in a couple weeks ago and he had he has those games in China where he scored like 70 and 80 points and we asked him like, like, how did you end up like getting to that point total? And he's just like, yeah, I just felt like going out and just putting up a big number. <laughs> did, did he win those games? I don't know. I didn't ask him. See, he won the stat line, though. That's well, I sure. don't think Jordan was concerned about winning any games. I think he was just concerned about like scoring a bunch of points, and then that way everybody on this side of the pond would be like, oh, Jordan Crawford had 85 points in China. Yeah, and now he signed with the Pelicans, so. Yeah. So he's. Must well, have he, worked a little bit. Yeah. So. But he, he's kind of become like that, like. Like elite score that's like an age like that's not playing with the team. They need like a quick guy to come in off the bench and score. Like Jordan's proven over time that he can just come in and fill it up. And he's older too. I mean, he's Jordan's probably thirty now. Twenty. Well, let's see. I'm twenty. Greg, I'm I was 30, twenty-eight. May. Thirty's pretty old. How's that 30. feel? They well, did win that Jordan Crawford. They won that game. They did win that game. Yeah. Well, thirty, you're getting old for like basketball terms. I mean, so, thirty, you're starting to push it a little bit. You know, I just I feel like I'm hitting my prime right now. Well, you're hitting your prime in you're life, but you're not hitting your prime no, as an athlete. Yeah, oh, as an a- all the way around, all the way around. Yeah, yeah, as an athlete, I think your prime is behind you. <laughs> what, what, would, what was your prime as an athlete? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Greg, he's being I humble. Just, he was pretty fast. Yeah, I was, I was fast. He, he ran against some people. I, was, I ran who? I ran a four three nine forty. Wow. Yeah, um, that's good. I'm assuming. Brandon Sane, um, uh, Tyson Gay, indoor. Um, you ran against Tyson Gay. I, I didn't. He beat. I mean, yeah, I just, yes, he I crushed just, me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he was on the track, you know. He it's, it was a it was an indoor two hundred, and he had me at the at the first turn, and I was in the inside <laughs> lane. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't look very fast. Um, Brandon Harrison. Well, you're also Rager. a white guy, though, so it's impressive. That's just true. To get out there. That's true. There weren't there weren't too many too many white guys out there. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, there. I, I can't remember everybody, but there were a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a kid from Tippecanoe that was real fast. Uh, Tippecanoe. Tippecanoe. <laughs> yeah, Tippecanoe. Real, real good real, runner out of Tippecanoe. Yeah. <laughs> he ran. A, he ran like a twenty twenty one in the twos. He, was, there were a bunch of bunch of good runners. But yeah, that was it. But I, the first time I dunked a basketball was when I was two twenty eight. So. Oh wow. So I'm. Still, what do you credit that to? I just. Get working, getting back in shape, getting back in a gym, plyometrics. Uh, no, just getting back. In Watching gym. people jump. Yeah, no, that no. didn't help either. Mm-hmm. Just working out again. Just working out again, pretty yeah. much. God, where's that guy from Tippecanoe now? Uh, Where do you think was, he is? Uh, 
His last name was actually Nick. It was Nick Landis, and I have no idea. Jeez. To overseas, have you been anywhere else overseas outside of China? No, that was my first time out of the country. Actually, where were you at in China? Beijing, Shenzhen, and Xi'an. Nice. The language barrier over there is rough. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely difficult. Uh, we did a couple clinics for some high school basketball teams, and you know the, the, the language barrier is tough. But you just had to show them and point at your leg, like. All right, r- left, right on right hand pull-ups, right, left on left hand, uh, all these moves, and they ate it up. They thought we were LeBron James and <laughs> Co., uh, like the dream team. And they worked way harder than I would say a regular high school team. Oh, wow. It was, yeah, it wasn't even close. Hmm. Interesting. Kobe Bryant's opening up a school over there, over in China. Mm-hmm. That'll be exciting. Lucrative, I'm sure. Have you watched his I'm new sure show? I know, I just saw that no. he got a show. Have you seen it? I haven't. I thought Brad might have been on that. Uh, no, I'm not. What is it? It's called Detail, and he does the, like, the intricacies of uh, basketball games. Oh, I haven't seen it. He's starting with the playoffs, correct? And That's yeah. kind of what I saw on the bottom line. Uh, what is it playing off of? ESPN, I believe. It's like an ESPN oh. online platform. I don't know. Oh, ESPN trying to make some moves. Well, they better. Because well, they have to because they're struggling. They're struggling hard. The Bleacher Reports of the world is about to eat them alive. Mm-hmm. Eat mm-hmm. them up. Oh, and I didn't ask you about the three-on-three. Three. How was that? The three-on-three three in uh, San Antonio. It was awesome. Uh, I met a lot of guys that I'll probably talk to forever. Um, it's a different game, though. You know, the ball goes through the hoop, and you can kick it out and shoot a three right away. No, so right away. I watched a little bit of it. That that was crazy. The setup, the half court, and how quick it was. Yeah. So and, and there was like Cardi B playing in the background the whole time. So you, <laughs> you can't talk on defense. You can't say I have your gap. And so we won our first game. We beat American with uh, Shaq Morris and Connor Frankamp, and we're like, oh, we're gonna do pretty good. And we play Ohio Valley, and you know their strategy was like, all right, let them drive it and dunk it, and then we'll relocate and shoot threes. We lost twenty-one to seven. Wow. Oh, Also, oh, they just gave up the rim and said, we're going to knock down shots and we're going to yeah, lose twos or greater than ones. Yeah. Yeah. So we were just, we had no idea. We were dead in the rights. But um, so that happened. And th- that was basically it. The next game was winner take all to go to the tournament. And we lost that one too. It was a close game. But they had the same strategy. And we kind of did too. They just hit more twos. And then, yeah, I, you know, I. Hit up uh, San Antonio, the Riverwalk, while I was nice. there, and saw a lot of college coaches and just hung out. It was a good time. Hey, was there anybody that uh, surprised you in that three on three tournament? How good they were? Anybody surprised? Uh, not really. Everyone um, was good. Yeah, everyone was really good, and then it was just like a it was a different game. You know, some of the smaller conferences did better than the big conferences. Yeah. Um, Who won that? Like Big was, Ten. The Big Ten one? Yeah. Who was on that Big Ten team? I don't know. I just Vince I, Edwards, Jay Sean Tate, Nate Mason, and kid from Indiana, uh, Robinson. Oh, okay. I didn't even see the Big I saw that JP played in the, in the, for the Big yeah, East Yeah, didn't one, they right? lose their first game? I, I didn't even see it. Yeah, I didn't they, see got, they got beat pretty, pretty bad because I thought the Big East was going to win. Yeah. I just, you know, JP, Rousey. Uh, Rodriguez was on it too, I yeah. think. Desi. Well, Trayvon was supposed to play in it, then he didn't yeah. end up going. Uh, Jenkins, I think oh, his yeah. name from UCF. Uh, or, no, that's American. No, Sorry, that was, that was American. Um, was there like money like right on the sideline? Yeah, they give us a. Uh, so Mark Titus would throw like a thousand <laughs> dollar duffel bag to you, and it's all like Monopoly money. <laughs> They're singles and. They put a camera in your face, and I think everybody just made it rain. That was just the move. Pretty funny. <laughs> so did you get paid to go and do it? It was all-inclusive. Like, they just paid for everything. Oh, they paid for oh that's cool. Flight, and then each win, you won 250 individually, so 1,000 as a team. Oh, that's so, cool. So I made, it, I made a little bit of money. So Brad's always been very shy about talking to this. So how much did Wright State give you to go there? Because he won't <laughs> disclose how much Xavier gave him. To play, and, you know, I was just kind of figuring, you know, maybe you'd be willing to open up about that. The Michigan Player of the Year probably made a little bit more money. That's what I'm saying. He won't tell me how much money he actually got. I don't like like money. (laughs) (laughs) I'm allergic. No, yeah, right right state kept it clean. We did everything 
Buy the book. Buy the book, exactly. I'm always, I'm a buy the book guy. I have been. If you know anything about me, it's, it's that I am buy the book. I've been buy the book forever. Hmm. Things haven't changed over here. Things haven't changed at all over here. As you sip down that coffee. That I paid money for. Like at 86 cents or whatever. Gosh, man. Well, Grant, you got a lot ahead of you. Us, we're probably going to be in Cincinnati. I plan on being in Cincinnati here in the next few months. Grant, you could be in China. You could be in Israel. You could be in Vietnam. You could be in Mexico. You could be in California. You could be back in Cincinnati. <laughs> you never know. I mean, you can, <laughs> a, lot, a, lot, a lot of things happen. I didn't, I didn't think I would still be here, but I'm here. I'm here for good, I think. Not, not a bad place to be, though. It is a great spot. These guys love Toledo. They're big Toledo guys. Yeah, you guys. That's where I went to college. Beat the Rockets this year. Grant, Grant did. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Don't hold it against Grant. I only went to like two basketball games when I was there. I was much more about um, the bar scene than the basketball team. I, I haven't heard anything about the Toledo bar scene. It's not That's fantastic. I just like took three. advantage of what the little there was to offer. Um, Brad's been to the I, it was to actually Toledo hotspot. First bar I ever got drunk at was in Toledo. Yeah. Really? Yeah. At Chasers. The oh. first bar, not the first time I ever got drunk. The first bar I ever got drunk at was at Chasers in Toledo. I mm. was um, 17, 18? 17 or 18 at that time. <laughs> so right. I was 17 or. Oh, okay. I wasn't. I think I was 18. If you were 18, then I was 20, so I was not yeah. bartending yet. Because I was, I had went from, I finished my high school career, and then I went to Xavier, and I was at Xavier for six weeks, and I did summer school, and then I went up back to Michigan, I went through Toledo, and I stayed with Andrew Taylor, and um, him and now his wife, Kristen Savage, they took me to Chasers, and... Um, yeah. Yeah. I played, UT's hot spot. I got after it a little bit. <laughs> I, got, I got food somewhere. You met Jeremiah at that point. That's amazing. That Jeremiah was the bouncer at Chaser. Still is. Yeah. He's yeah. the man. It was weird because you had I had to give him like a I had to give him like an ID or or something. And they held and they it. Had to hold on to yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's so weird. You might have gone across the street and got food from Jed's. Jed's on campus. Yeah, I probably got Jed's. He knows what's up. Is that what, it's like the balls? The balls, the fireballs. Fire balls. Man, I bartended at Jed's across the street from Chasers. Those are good. They are good. I miss them. I got the uh, the breakfast balls. Oh, the, nice. the yeah, those are. Oh, sound, they sound okay. It's They're like, fantastic. It's like chicken covered in like a bunch of different. A bunch of yeah, different it's stuff. like chicken nuggets. Man, yeah, mine was the smothered and covered. First off, Toledo's yeah. the absolute king of like chicken because everything's so. So I almost, <laughs> everything's like the, everything's so cheap there. It's just like, what can we put on chicken to keep this price point under six bucks for everyone across the whole city? So like Jed's was really crushing the game up there. The freak balls were my favorite. French fries with coleslaw on top of this honey barbecue chicken. Think about it often. <laughs> Get it never. You're passionate about it. I can hear it. Yeah. I can hear it in your I voice. Woke and up. In your I woke up after hearing about the balls. See, I'm gonna. You miss that. I'm, I'll be in Europe, and I'll be just missing Skyline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll be my thing. Uh, you can probably get it shipped over. Greg, when we were in college, Greg and I would drive an hour south to Lima yeah. to get Skyline Lima and then drive an hour back. Skyline. Wow. It was, on, it was exit 126. I said, I remember <laughs> exit 126, and we'd go to Skyline and get like $60 worth of food and bring the, it back. All the girls would like laugh at us, and then like she'd like go to bring our check, like, oh, we have a to-go order as well, please. <laughs> And can you put the cheese in a separate box? Yeah, because <laughs> it'll melt. Don't yeah. mess up my cheese. Yeah. Don't they always put the cheese in a separate uh, box? I mean, not, every not single container? Not, not on the conies. Not on the conies. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't even have them put the, the chili on the conies because then it makes the bun soggy. Yeah, yeah it's just, super soggy. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't deal with that. So you would just put the chili in a bowl? Yeah, and then, then you heat it up, and then you kind of like make your own, but it's, you know, it tastes the same. Just I'm a little, you, little I'm, fresher. I'm glad you guys put a lot of thought into it. Have you this. have you tried every chili based item on the menu? Ooh, probably not. Uh, chili? The, the what do you mean? The Chilito is like a un- amazing. Is, yeah, I get then this. Like the chili bowl, the the potato. No, oh. I haven't tried. Ooh, it. no potato. What? Just talk to me. Potato. What do we have it's here? Like a, it's a big old baked potato that they microwave for about three minutes. Yes. Which is kind of if I'm iffy on that, but who yeah. cares? Yeah. And then they just smother with chili and cheese. Uh, wow, it sounds. They're good at smothering anything and everything in chili and cheese. Yeah, you could. The Chilito has been big on my list of like, with the noodles inside yeah, yeah, of the. the. Yep. It's a big. That's the only way I've had one of those. Really? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, the first time I got a Chilito, that's the way it was, and then the second time I went, they, what I thought was, I thought they mm-hmm. forgot the noodles, and I was had a conniption yeah. inside. But they found out you have to actually ask for the noodles. 
Gotta ask. Gotta Do you ask. ever ask for cheese underneath the dog? Have you ever tried that? Sounds if, like a bad. No, see, I haven't. But if you're taking it home, if you're going, to, if you're taking <laughs> that it, that sounds home, like a very non-Cincinnati move. No, 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 it's amazing. Or is it a super Cincinnati? Yeah, move? you put it underneath, and then the dog chili, more cheese on top, and then the he chili. Say never, more cheese on top. The chili never goes to the bottom, so it's no soggy bun. The weirdest thing <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Are we just vying for a, a Skyline Chili sponsorship? Is that <laughs> what we're really going for here? I, I actually tweeted at them. Uh, no, no joke. Uh, five days ago, and said I keep the Dayton Skyline businesses open. <laughs> Sponsor me. Mm-hmm. Sponsor me. There you go. Yeah. So, Maybe we walk. can do that. Yeah, we, let's make that happen. That'd be excellent. Uh, we would eat Skyline here during, during six a.m. You know, while doing interviews. Don't care. I mean, six you had a hamburger from Big Boy. That was about a couple six, weeks ago. Like six thirty in the morning. And then you ended up getting food poisoning. Food poisoning. It was not food good. Poisoning. Poisoning. Food poisoning. Food poisoning. The poisoning. Oh uh, yeah. I think they there are multiple bathrooms at this location, so I was okay. It was bad. It was a rough day. Yeah, it's not good. Not rough good day. at all. Well, we got way off topic from uh, absolutely yeah, from uh, Molar basketball, Grant Benzinger, Wright State basketball, and then playing professionally, kind of in there. and then we just we we went all over the place. But we did get some. We got some good nuggets out of Grant. Grant's got a lot ahead of him. Three on three, we got San Antonio. Yeah, man. Best of luck moving forward, man. Yeah, I think you're going to do Thank well. Um, I think you'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. No, I think you'll do great. We do appreciate you coming in and coming in early because we, we know that it's it, – but you're used to it, so I guess I don't feel that bad. But we do appreciate you coming on. Uh, Grant Benzinger, Moeller legend, Wright State legend. Soon to be a professional basketball legend, Grant Benzinger. Congratulations on all your success so far, and good luck as you move forward here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep, see you, Grant. Thanks, Rip.